So in my last video, I reviewed this ROG Strix G15 gaming laptop. Uh, and even though the laptop itself was actually pretty good, its gaming performance was lacking a bit, especially when you consider the fact that it has this brand new AMD CPU and this brand new RTX 3070 GPU. So on paper, it should be way ahead. But in reality, it just ended up slightly over the last year's 2070 models. And you know, that's pretty disappointing. So based on some of your feedback and some of the feedback from ASUS as well, I'm going to go through all the steps I took to see what is actually holding back this performance. And then not just on this particular model, but also on the majority of gaming laptops that are launching this year, which is, you know, very important to know if you were planning to buy a laptop with the new RTX graphics card. So without further ado, let's begin. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their K60 RGB Pro. This affordable mechanical keyboard comes with Cherry's brand new super smooth viola switches, a nice aluminum finish, and of course, a bunch of RGB. Check it out using the links in the description below. Now, before I talk about what made a big difference, I wanna talk about some of the things that actually didn't make any. And the first one will be the drivers. So some of you suggested that an early driver would explain these lower numbers, which is definitely possible. So I did retest some of the games with the newest drivers and I actually came up with the exact same numbers as before. So the drivers were not the issue. The next thing was the thermals. Now, some of you said that the higher GPU thermals were causing this card to throttle. Uh, now, first, I want to say that the temperature results were completely fine to begin with and then lowering them even more by making the GPU fan run at 100% did not affect performance at all. So that wasn't the issue either. I also want to publicly respond to something that someone at ASUS said, uh, suggesting that the performance I showed is lower than their own numbers and that this might be a sample specific issue. But uh, using their own documentation they provided, it turned out that this very small difference was explained by ASUS doing their testing in turbo mode while I was doing my testing in the default performance mode, uh, something that I even, you know, mentioned in my review. Now, I don't think that there is one perfect way to test a product, but I do think that it makes most sense to just test and judge a product based on how the manufacturer ships it. Now, unless there is an actual issue with the factory default mode, I will use that one. And if they think that some other mode is better, they should just make that the default instead. And still, uh, even though both performance and turbo profiles are viable, I would suggest you keep the default mode on as it offers, you know, the best balance between performance, thermals and noise. Now, one thing that I personally thought could explain the lack of difference between the two generations was the screen resolution. And it actually did to some extent, but not completely. Now, when a new high-end GPU launches for desktops, you pretty much really need a higher resolution than 1080p to see its real benefits. So I wanted to test that out as well, especially because this G15 comes with a fast Quad HD screen instead of the usual Full HD one. Now, I took a very similar model from last generation, the ROG SCAR that has an 8-core i7-10875H and a 115 watt RTX 2070 Super. So it should be a very good match for this new ROG Strix G15 with an 8-core Ryzen 9 5900HX and a 115 watt RTX 3070. Now it's not completely apples to apples since this one has an Intel CPU, this one has an AMD CPU, so you should keep that in mind. But the fact is that last year there was no high-end gaming laptops with an AMD CPU, so this would be the closest thing. Now let's start with some results on 1080p, and since some games simply do better on an Intel platform and others do better on an AMD platform, the results are all over the place, but in all 13 games I tested, the average difference ended up being less than 1% between the two, making them just pretty equal. And that also shows the reason to make this video in the first place, because you would kind of expect the RTX 3070 laptop to do much better. But let's see what happens on 1440p. For the G15, I used its internal panel, and for the SCAR 17, I had to use an external monitor connected via the HDMI port, and the G15 did a bit better. It was faster in almost every title, from a couple of percent to about 15% faster, and on average, it was about 8% faster than the SCAR. So the high resolution is definitely helping out the G15, but it's still not an exciting difference. 
But what did make a huge difference was the Optimus, or, you know, disabling it, that is. Now, Optimus is NVIDIA's feature that you'll find in most gaming laptops these days. Uh, it basically lets the laptop switch between the dedicated graphics card and the integrated graphics card on your CPU on the fly. So, when you're gaming, for example, your laptop will automatically use the more powerful GPU. But when you're doing some light work, it will automatically swap to the integrated graphics, which is a lot more energy efficient. And thanks to this Optimus feature, this G15 has a battery life of close to 10 hours when you're doing some light work, which would be, you know, impossible without it. But Optimus also has one major downside, and that is that the laptop display is actually connected to the integrated graphics first and then to your GPU. So your RTX card has to put the frames back through the CPU to your screen instead of directly. And as a result of that, you do lose performance. But the question is, how much performance do you lose because of Optimus? Now, the only way to test this is to ignore the display and connect an external monitor via the USB Type-C port in the back, as that is the only way to actually go around the integrated graphics and connect directly to the NVIDIA GPU. Now, starting with Cyberpunk, which is a game that I originally thought had a CPU bottleneck at 1080p, actually showed a really big improvement going from 65 to 75 FPS, which is roughly a 15% performance increase. On 1440p, the difference is a bit smaller, going from 49 to 52 FPS, but that is still 6% better. In Watch Dogs Legion, it looks a tiny bit different. At 1080p high settings, there is a nice 6% FPS increase, but with RTX and DLSS on, there is basically no difference at all. But on 1440p, it's showing a 10% increase at high settings and a 23% increase with RTX and DLSS on, and that is something that you will definitely notice while playing this game. Now, Metro Exodus is a game that doesn't seem to be affected by Optimus much. Uh, there is a small increase when using the external screen, but it is not something that you would really notice while playing. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, at 1080p high and ultra settings, it just looks like Optimus isn't having much of an impact. But when you look at 1080p medium, it actually gets interesting. With Optimus, it looks like you're hitting a CPU bottleneck, but without Optimus on, the frame rates actually go up by more than 20%. At 1440p, there is a 5 to 15% difference depending on the setting. So again, I would say it is pretty significant. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, performance goes up by around 9% on 1080p and 3% on 1440p. And Far Cry 5 is another game with a bigger benefit at 1080p, with about 14% difference on that resolution and 9% on 1440p. The Division 2 is a little bit more consistent across all resolutions, uh, showing an 11 to 12% increase at 1080p and 1440p respectively. And the same goes for Borderlands 3, which has a 13% increase at both resolutions. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the difference is 17% at 1080p and 10% at 1440p. In Call of Duty Warzone, it is 17% at 1080p and 12% at 1440p, which is a huge deal, especially in a competitive game like this one. And the last, but definitely not the least, is Doom Eternal, which showed a ridiculous 47% increase in FPS at 1080p and 33% increase at 1440p. So there is definitely a lot to take away here. Now, first, the impact of Optimus really depends on the game you're looking at, uh, with some games showing almost no difference, but others showing a huge impact from having Optimus off. And it doesn't seem to be related to the resolution much either. Now, some games benefit more at 1080p, while others benefit more at 1440p, but across all results, the average increase in performance is actually around 12% for both 1080p and 1440p. And 12% is actually a big deal. If you add that 12 to 7% that the G15 has over the SCAR, things do look a lot better. So yeah, I would say that this all sounds quite bad, but not having Optimus would kill the battery life. Now, another solution would be the MUX switch, which allows you to just manually switch between the two GPUs, but that does require you to reboot your laptop every time you do so, so it's also not an ideal solution. 
Now, the ideal thing would be the Advanced Optimus, which offers the benefits of Optimus and the Mach Switch together, but laptops that have it seem very, very rare. I mean, so rare that I haven't actually seen one that has it. And I did ask ASUS why they chose not to include it in their lineup, and they said it is because it only works with a couple of panels and it's still quite buggy, so they chose not to. So it looks like that for now we are stuck with Optimus with no other way to disable it but to connect an external monitor via the USB Type-C port in the back, which kind of defeats the purpose of buying a gaming laptop, as most people, you know, buy it to save space or to game on the go. So, if you really need to buy a laptop right now, you have three choices in my opinion. You can either look for a laptop that doesn't use Optimus at all, that will have its own downsides, but you'll get the full power of your GPU. Second thing is that you can accept this gaming performance impact and settle for the fact that the overall performance is still, you know, okay. Even if the gaming isn't much better than the last gen, the G15 here is still pretty interesting thanks to its new AMD CPU, the fast Quad HD display and the better battery life. So as an all-arounder, it's a good option. Or you can look at last year's models that should be down in price by now uh, and they will offer the similar gaming performance. But if you don't need to buy right now, my best honest advice at the moment would be to just wait for the Advanced Optimus feature to become more widespread, because I really hope that these numbers will be convincing enough to make more brands look into this issue and eventually fix it. Now that's it for today, I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give me a like and subscribe to Tech Testers for more. Bye guys!